doing tonight, Carlos? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. It's uh, I'm excited to go ahead and wrap up Dirt Week. I'm excited and a little bit sad that we're going to be done with uh, the whole Dirt content that we've been doing. As uh, Well, you're kind of still a, a rookie to broadcasting, and I'm a rookie to Dirt broadcasting. So um, this, whole, this whole experience has been incredibly fun. It's been just a massive blast, and uh, I look forward to maybe doing it again um, now that uh, I'm, I'm wrapping it up and I'm getting the hang of it and seeing what's going on. So, uh, yeah, and I'm also still trying to learn how to pronounce Lernerville. <laughs> As uh, we're all still kind of struggling with that as well, but uh, Charles, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here with the super late models. And I mentioned this the last time that um, the last time that we were we were on air, which was uh, I would say just a couple hours ago, about twenty two hours ago. Um, I mentioned that these are these have got to be my favorite looking race cars uh, in the dirt category, of course. Uh, I just love the the way they look. I love the way they they behave throughout the corners and it's the only dirt content that i did purchase when i when uh, dirt did come out on iRacing uh but charles um what about you how, how what's your opinion on these type of vehicles on uh, on dirt racing it's definitely interesting uh coming from uh the sprint cars from yesterday the winged and the non-winged ones um it seems these are very similar to the non-wings with the control, but maybe not as much power because they're a little bit heavier. So there's uh, there's definitely some aspect there where um, I'm sort of expecting a bunch of carnage going on right now. We do have the players, or I'm sorry, the drivers uh, wrapping up qualifying here. Um, we're definitely excited to see what kind of mayhem's going on. And we got a pretty good points race uh, for the top five, for the uh, December Dirt Race or uh, Dirt Week uh, presented by a ASRS with Wicked Energy Gum as well. There is a top four, top five prizes given out. And right now, in first place, we have Kaz Bedford with 114 points. In second place, we have Craig Stikes with 111 points. Now, it seems to be uh, because of the point structure that these two are probably the only uh winners of the points total the championships yeah we should say Re realistically there um, is a chance though for for there, there is a chance brad. uh for brad dyer to sneak up and take the series but they do need bedford to finish i think 15th or worse stikes to finish 12th or worse and brad dyer needs to scoop up all four bonus points for tonight uh point for leading the lap point for leading the most laps and also the two extra bonus points for winning the race. So if he's able to scoop all those and Stikes and Bedford have are essentially out of the race early on, he he can definitely walk away with this championship this week. But oh. then if we go down to fourth place and lower, yeah, Carlos, what's up? Oh no, I was just reacting to your little hiccup there and seeing uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay, but I, I guess that. I guess I'll continue. I guess with fourth place we got Tim Knott. Uh, currently 23 points behind the fray. Um, looking at, we do. I, I, I doubt that we have enough drivers. Uh, I, I'm not a mathematician. Peter's not here. Cam's not here. Um, Charles, I don't know how you do with math, but I don't think that he has. I'm a, pretty good with numbers. Not yeah, I, I don't think that he has a chance. Uh, I don't think there's enough drivers for even to have a, even the smallest chance. But uh, yeah, Tim not not only 91 points, 23 points out. Josh Gerlach. Uh, 25 points out in fifth. Uh, Jay Crabble is going to be six. 25 points out as well. It's it's a three way tie for fifth place at the moment between Josh, Jay, and Clarence. Um, Danny Rogers. It is definitely currently makes eighth. it interesting. Oh, yep. Because um, well, just a recap real quick. Uh, top five do receive a uh, prize from the cash purse that the series does have for this. So we got a pretty good battle for fourth and fifth position, all being separated by two points. Um, Tim Knott, Josh Gerlach, uh, Craybill, and Bonner, they are all racing for, you know, for the cash money that's available for fourth mm -hmm. and fifth spot. So, you know, we're definitely looking. Uh, Gerlach was definitely at the top of the races yesterday. Uh, we got Craybill. Tim Knott was in the mix as well. And then Bonner as well. So, I mean, like, we can definitely see a really good race towards the end. It's kind of unique where like Brad 
Dyer is sort of like in limbo in third where he's just like, hey, I'm chilling here. I locked up third probably. Could win if I get really lucky. I could get out of the top five if I get really unlucky. So he's in a very weird limbo-ish spot. Um, but outside of uh, Mr. Bonner in seventh place, we do have Danny Rogers in eighth with 83 points. Uh, Jim Foose, ninth place with 79 points. And Michael Whitty, Whitting. Whitting. Yeah. Whiting? We'll, I say we'll go Whitting. Whiting. I say Whitting. You, you Whitting. go with Whiting. I'll say Whitting. That we, we have a decent Whiting chance of Whiting seems about winning. right. All right. Okay. So <laughs> Whiting is 78 points out from first. Or from first. Just 78 points total. He's 36 from first. But he is only 11 points away from fifth place. So... I mean, it is going to take a lot more work to jump that many spots because of the point structure, but there is a chance if Michael walks away with a good finish, like if he if Michael ends up winning the race, like he could definitely hop up from 10th to 5th, depending on how other drivers finish for tonight's race. All right, so we got uh, race control going over uh, the now, so it looks like drivers are about to get ready. Um Looks like we're going to have maybe two heat races. I don't know how many drivers we have for tonight. Let's see. We had two heat races um, on the second main event uh, last night. Yeah, so we're going to have to see if this breaks up into two heat races or not. But same thing as before, um, where the top eight in qualifying automatically qualify for the feature, but they're going to be inverted. So right now we have Brad Dyer in the poll uh, with a 15.701. Richard's Spar. We'll go with that. Spa. Yeah, that sounds correct. Spar. Okay. With a that's 15. A, that's 7. a pretty cool last name. Yeah. Very unique. Um, Chaz Bedford in third. AJ Gru Cruz in fourth. Zachary DeLong in fifth. Colin Pinn in sixth. Jay Craybill in seventh. And Jim Foose rounds out your top eight. So those are your eight drivers right there. That rundown. Is this... going to move on to the feature automatically, and it looks like Jim Foos is going to take the poll because we do invert the yes. top eight. No, so it no. looks like everyone from Doug Mullins, Jr. Bash, and down is going to go on to the heat races, where this... they're going to fight for a position as well. Yeah, this this to me seems like uh, I, unless I'm incorrect, this would be Jim's first uh, first race this uh, this whole week, where uh, in the dirt week, of course, where he doesn't have to participate in the heat. Um, Jim has kind of been marred with some bad luck, uh, pretty much all week as well, getting involved in accidents that he just, he just pretty much was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So it'll be pretty interesting to see, uh, with Jim being at the front, uh, what he can do to maybe, uh, turn that luck around. He's out of championship contention, of course, but he, he can still, he can still grab those, uh, top five, uh, points and get some of that, uh, uh reward as well. Um... I mean, Jim isn't a stranger to winning. Him and his Menards crew always have a Ooh. has a, has a pretty big history of winning uh, since the league has been around in the NR two thousand three days. It's a very very old league, but uh, uh, pardon me. The barking dogs is the sign that I'll be taking over for a couple minutes as uh, Charles yeah, has to take the, care the of. The wolves a are going crazy up here in Pennsylvania. Right yeah, Charles. Way. They are the wild dogs are going mad. Uh, Charles, I'll go ahead and take care of this first. They just Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Real quick. Um, one thing I did notice, Mr. Stikes is not available. He is not on the racing uh, schedule right now. Oh. that. So I don't know if Chaz Bedford is going to walk away with the win. I mean, that's one less driver that Brad Dyer has to worry about finishing ahead of. But now it seems like this is, Ch this is Ch Chaz Bedford's championship to walk away with and it looks like we're only going to split off to one heat oh, okay. which is nice um but yeah with uh mr craig stikes not here tonight i mean this is chaz bedford's championship to lose uh this is definitely going to be very interesting and i'm definitely looking forward to seeing uh brad dyer just putting the pedal to the metal in the feature and just trying to see if he can uh put Chaz Bedford to bed. But like I said, he has to finish, I believe in 15th and worse. And for every bonus point that he doesn't get, that's another position that Bedford has to finish less than. So it looks like we have 18 drivers 
So I'm pretty sure if Dyer gets all the points, he has to finish 15th or worse. So that means he has finished in the bottom three. That's sort of unlikely the way Bedford's been running this weekend or this week. So it's definitely going to be an interesting race. Carlos, what do you? How do you feel about this with the Heat uh, lineups about to uh, go? I, I'm excited uh, <clears throat> for sure. I'm excited. Um, I, I'm honestly a little disappointed we're not going to have a second Heat race. Just some more racing for us to cover. Um, this whole this whole uh, third week itself has been just fantastic, and I I don't want it to end honestly. But uh, now we're going to be going into Heat One. Uh, we got. Couple of good drivers that all can can probably in at least in the normal ASRS ch- championship, but all can all win a race. Uh, I still don't know everybody's range and uh, and skill set within dirt, um, but uh, I, I I'm just excited to see what these guys can do. As, as I always mention, as I've been mentioning uh, this whole week, uh, I I do think that these drivers in the heats do you get some sort of advantage participating, even if it's only ten small laps at a uh, very small ra- uh, racetrack. It's still 10 laps of actual green flag condition racing that, that you get to experience as opposed to the other drivers. So they can mess up turn one here, have have just a horrible lap hit everybody. But now going into the main event, they know what they did wrong, or at least hopefully they know what they did wrong. And they'll they'll fix whatever they did. And so when they go into into the first corner on the main event, they'll they already know what the limits were. So they, they won't be finding themselves going high, wide, and handsome over into uh into past no wall corners because uh i don't know if you can tell there are no walls throughout these corners only one wall and uh, that is in the front stretch uh other than that you got negative banking to compete with and a hard time to get yourself back in track yeah we we definitely witnessed that a lot uh with the sprint cars especially um carrying that much speed going into the turn and then all of a sudden you're just going over that berm and trying to find that high line to work uh with these cars the dirt super late models i was watching the practices and um it seemed like there's a little bit more control without keeping them going over the berm but i think the big thing is like uh some drivers may have is just overturning the cars from what i saw but here we go we're about to take the green flag and they are off and it looks like oh i just lost my uh settings uh doug mullins it's going to slide into turn two. We got some uh, bumping going on, but just some instant side-by-side action going into the turns. Doug Mullins out ahead. Someone's over the berm, and uh, Jason because Stewart. Because heat race, I don't think we got a caution. No, uh, well, uh, caution laps are not counted during the heat races. Uh, but yeah, Jason okay. Stewart has gone over, uh, and so pretty much his race is kind of done at the moment. Uh, but like, that's like Doug Mullins. And J.R. Bash are battling for first and second. JR oh, Josh Gerlach. able to take in. Hmm? Josh Gerlach, the... I had an issue, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That that wasn't J.R. Bash. That's 10 knot. Uh, it looked like a 4, not a 41 on his car. Uh, so the 41 is taking the lead as Doug Mullins, J.R. Bash is in third, Richard Stallings in fourth, and Clarence Bonner is in fifth. And that's your top five going around the corner for uh, lap number four right now. Uh, looks like the 17 of Richard Stallings is definitely trying to make that high line work. Uh, I was afraid he was going to berm. Well, he's, he's definitely flying with that berm right there. And we got a good race for second right now. And it looks like Stallings is going to in- introduce himself to the mix. We got J.R. Bash making the pass on Doug Mullins. Richard Stallings just carrying all that momentum on the outside. Looks like this is definitely going to be the race right here. Uh, yeah, and everyone pretty spread out, so it looks like top four is where the action's at right now. Oh, yeah. man, Mullins looked like he just overturned that wheel coming out of that turn, and he lost so much speed that Richard Stallings on the outside looking to pass him, but not yet. We got a battle for the lead uh, Looks like there might have been some contact. As uh, it looks like the four of Jr. Bash has been slowly catching up to the 41 of Tim Knott. As uh, these two drivers are going to be going side by side very, very soon, I can tell. The four definitely has speed, but the question is that the 41 is kind of running his lane. And there is lap traffic, uh, if something can be done about that uh, from Jr. Bash's perspective. Yes, we do. Two laps lap, and the four is using the grass. Uh, He lost a lot of speed there. I think that probably just killed all of his momentum of possibly win this heat race right there. 
As soon as he touched that grass, he just lost all of his speed. Going, taking the final lap. We got Tim Knott just out leading, and it looks like JR Bash is just over driving the turn. Just he is making up some ground, but unfortunately, he seems to be two to three laps shy of making the pass. And Tim Knott is going to take down the finals with JR Bash in second, Richard Stallings in third, Doug Mullins in fourth, Clarence Bonner in fifth, Mitch Brown in sixth. Daniel Deffler in seventh, Josh Gerlach in eighth, Jason Stewart in ninth, and Michael Whitey, Whitey Whiting yeah. in tenth. He had to park it uh, a couple laps. Uh, pardon me, a couple laps into the race. Uh, one of the rules that uh, we'll, we'll quickly go over right now as we're doing a quick, a quick uh, five-minute warm-up. Uh, Charles, some of the rules, uh, special events for for the Rugged Energy Gump December Dirt Week is. Um, you cannot, you cannot get your car serviced. You cannot be in pit road during green flag conditions. Pit road is only open during uh, caution laps, uh, uh, as well as during practice and qualifying. Of course, you see a person just uh, almost like a monster champ type of scenario there with the uh, entrance into the racetrack. Um, if you find yourself in pit road at any time that the green flag is out, you will be parked for the rest of the night. Now, for qualifying, which has already gone through. Um, any driver that leaves the session automatically gets their time disallowed for any reason. And uh, any driver that does not start the race uh, will be marked with a DNS that did not start regardless of if they come back in or not. So uh, as these drivers are getting ready to do uh, a sort of uh, four-wide salute, which we saw them do last night, Charles. I'm noticing that the way the, they're driving these vehicles, they have more confidence with the sprint cars. Uh, I... I have driven these vehicles before, but it's it's been a long time, and I'm not a good dirt racer. Um, but based on on your small dirt track experience, which is already way way more than what I have, how would you rate the difficulty of handling these vehicles compared to the the sprint races that we saw last night? Um, I'll probably rate them the same, to be honest with you. Really? Uh, maybe the sprint cars are a little bit uh, harder because they're. Uh, they're a lot lighter, so you're going a lot faster and a lot more power, it feels like, with the sprint cars and these late models. So, I mean, I guess you're comparing, like, an Indy car to, like, a, a bread box. So, <laughs> apple sore. Going just... around the track. We have our four wide salute that they did here so famously last night, as, as well as with the other real-life dirt drivers pretty much do. I don't know if this is a tradition for every um for every track out there but this is something that uh, i see a lot out there is as I'm, I'm not gonna lie I, I i haven't seen many dirt races in my life it's something that i'm very interested in but it's just it was just something i was not aware of uh, at least that it was such a popular type of uh, of racing until i would say a couple years ago yeah um i don't know if this is like a standard thing amongst dirt tracks or this is just a, a thing where, like, um, the Alan Kowicki uh, backwards victory, victory lap, um, like, once the, once he did that and then he died, like, it sort of became a standard. Um, I think that this might be that thing where it's just sort of becoming a standard, but I don't know if every track does it. I think it also depends because I, I remember there was a couple tracks out there where sprint cars used to start four wide and just go on a couple of the tracks and that was pretty crazy to watch i do remember that but real quick while they're doing the the uh four wide salute this race is brought to you by american sim racing series and wicked energy gum make sure to check out wickedenergygum.com so you can purchase some gum get some shipped to you if you can't find any available at your store and they also have a, a store locator to see where you can buy some Wicked Energy gum and what at is the local website? stores near you. Wickedenergy.com wicked is right. the website. Heads up, everybody. They do yeah. have a special event as I drop a couple things from my desk. Uh, if you buy two boxes, you get free shipping. So right there, you're already saving money. And then on top of that, one piece of gum equals an amount of caffeine and a cup of coffee. And best case scenario... When you save the shipping, you're paying less than 90 cents a piece of gum, which is you're all okay. the caffeine that you need. 
<laughs> I know, right? Do you I, need I some that. Wicked Energy gum? I needed some Wicked Energy gum today during work. I, I think I'm, I think I'm getting, I think I'm getting sick because I'm just incredibly exhausted. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot oh, better man, now, but uh, I, I definitely needed some Wicked Energy gum. <laughs> you definitely need some pep in your step for the night. And as <laughs> these guys are just running some loose practice runs. Real quick, uh, we're about 10 seconds before they start lining up for the feature. We're going to bring you a quick rundown of the starting grid. So in first place, we got Jim Foose starting off in the pole position. Jay Craybill in second place on the outside pole. Third place, we got Colin Pinn. Fourth place, we got Zachary DeLong. Fifth place, AJ Cruz. Sixth place, we got Kaz Bedford. Currently, our points uh, oh winner right now, or points uh, leader, I should say. Carlos, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say this, but we have some late breaking news. And if I had late breaking news sound effects, I would be playing them right now. Um, we have just received word from Will Worcester Racing, uh, courtesy of Will Worcester himself. That uh, quote from him. Uh, Craig Stikes uh, didn't make it in time and got locked out of the of the session. He is currently in the holler talking to the theme therapist. Oh my God, what a blowout! Because uh, Will helped us broadcast yesterday, and I had a uh, a couple uh, minutes to just talk to him about the series and everything because he is a driver in the series and a team owner of a lot of these drivers, including Stikes as well, and he's. He felt very confident that Stikes was going to walk away with the championship tonight, or at least win this race. I don't know about the championship because if Bedford finishes second, I don't think uh, anyone would have beat him. But he felt very confident that his driver, Stikes, was going to win this race. And then all of a sudden, when we're doing the heat race, I just realized Stikes is not even on the board. So, man, that's a blow. You know that's someone frustrating. Um and he's throwing his helmet. He's, you know, I hope he doesn't have a dog because he might be kicking it. How frustrated he is! And that's, now it's uh, just let, a joke. Let's, let's get away from these type of uh, descriptions. <laughs> yeah. uh, he that's more than likely didn't do that. He more than likely no, didn't do didn't. anything. I, I got some information from Josh Garlack, and he uh, he told me that the World of Outlaws always does the four white salute. So that's more than likely where I'm getting that information, or where, where okay, I was so getting that's all something that. that yeah. they do. Yes. Is that really a? a dirt track thing okay all right so this is a uh, good news for brad dyer he definitely gets bumped up to second place uh because i even think if he finishes dead last he still gets enough points to pass greg stikes in the points well craig so stikes won't be getting any like... points period yeah that's what i'm saying so the i think the minimum points you get in this race uh let me see real quick if i look at someone uh it looks like 23 is the minimum Six. And that's for a uh, 23, I see a 20. Yeah, so it looks like 20 points is minimum. So, I mean, he's definitely going to pass them right Green there. Green flag is out. Sorry, Charles. I, I, I didn't think you were watching. Green flag is no, out. No, you're fine. As uh, Jim Foose has quickly lost the lead now that Jay Corbell has taken over uh, from him. Uh, Jim Foose is currently battling the 52, who makes a contact with the 343. And he goes around. AJ Cruz goes around. Caution is out. I... Couldn't quite Ooh. see who, who had that Talladega Knights car that just made some contact with him. But let's quickly go back and see just what happened. Oh, uh, yeah. He... So it looks like uh, AJ just takes in a little too deep and makes contact with the 52 and just ends up going sideways. It's like, who is that? It looks like they didn't get any damage uh, when they hit him. It looks like they were just mid-slide and... Uh, he might have some right front damage going on there. The eighty, the sixty-six. Do we have a six-six? Oh no, it was Bonner in the ninety-nine. Clarence Bonner ended up hitting uh, AJ Cruz, so that's a bummer right there for him. Yeah. Senator Bonner's in that three-way tie for fifth place. Well, it's still not over yet. We'll see just how hard of a damage that. Uh, Bonner has, and I'm glad to see your confidence has, has uh, shortly gone up, at least from last night, where you took two seconds to actually say his name, just to make sure you were saying it correctly. Uh, but let's take a look and see what... Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, it looks like AJ Cruz is in pit road. Hopefully, he can get a lot of his damage done before oh, the green flag comes out, because on. once that green flag comes out, he is done for the night. <clears throat> AJ Cruz is in pit road, but his... 
pit lane and pit stop time are identical, which tells me that he actually took a tow. And depending on how close or far away he is, it, there may not be enough time for him to actually get out of pit road um, without uh, b before the green flag comes out. That's what happened to a couple of drivers last night. They took a tow and they were unable to. Currently, one to green. We're not seeing any word of AJ Green exiting pit road. He's still there and he's got some heavy damage, which also tells me that if he took a tow, there was probably a reason he took a tow because we saw him drive off. Uh, so if that car is heavily damaged, he doesn't have time to get anything fixed. So if he leaves now and the car's even worse, it's it's just bad. I think his race is done. Yes, more than likely, and you hate to see it, but here we go. We're, the drivers are about to take the green flag, and Jim Crabill takes a good nope, jump. Jake Crabill. But Jim Foose is right behind him, not letting them go, get too far out ahead. And we got a good race. We got the 23. Nope, the 93. Oh, we got another caution. Oh, who is that? JR Bash. He is kind of slow on the back stretch right now. Let's go back and see if we can see what happened to him. Give me too much. Speed. Oh, there was a checkup. He, he, could, he made some contact uh, with him. He was just in... Doug Mullins. Yeah, it looks like he was just um, involved in the chain of checkups where he was the last guy in line and just. I'm watching it now on my screen, and yeah, it was just unfortunate. It's sort of that incident where you're the last man in line. You don't see what's going on at first. But it did look like it was caused by the 17 turning a little too much and making contact with the one car of Jason Stewart and the 51 car of Mitch Brown. So that entire ordeal looked like it started with Richard Stallings. And rightfully so. Well, not rightfully so. I apologize for that. But it looks like Richard Stallman was given an EOL penalty for uh, that because that, his car was the one that started that chain reaction of everyone else checking up and getting damaged. Mm -hmm. And officially, we can see it from here. Unfortunately, we don't have a camera angle for this. But AJ Cruz crew is uh, pushing that vehicle to their van. Yeah, it looks like he's already gotten in the hauler and everything. Well, there's All definitely right, so no real quick, here this time, though. <clears throat> well, you can't be mad at yourself when, uh, you know, you, you just, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like, it, it sort of felt like AJ Cruz wasn't too wild, but I mean, like. No, it, made, it's, it's dirt racing, racing, of course, uh, just uh, pushing mm -hmm. a little too hard, which is, of course, that's what you're expected to do as a race car driver. Just push it a little too hard, a little too, too many drivers around and uh, got some extra help, of course. Nobody's. Not really, not really anybody's fault uh, or just any anybody to 100% yeah. put blame on. It's dirt racing, and uh, unfortunately, yeah. And traditionally, these, a lot, all these drivers are uh, cup or truck drivers that just this is their off season race that they're doing. So, you know, a lot of these guys are just like, oh yeah, let me, you know, run some dirt with some of my boys that I've been running all year with, and you know, the, the experience might not be there, but you know. Yeah, and boys. it looks like we're taking the green flag, and Jim Crabill gets a good oh, jump. Jay Crabill, every, every, every time. <laughs> oh, I just straight up reversed it. Jay Crabill. Jim, however, has lost a couple positions. Oh, uh, since he lost the lead, he's going to make some contact. He's going to go wide. Oh, oh no, Jim. And Jay's keeping it on the high caution line. Caution is out. all that momentum. Oh, uh, and we got a caution. Who, who brought out the caution now? That was Jim. We were actually looking at it live as that happened. So a contact between the 56 and I couldn't quite catch who that was made some contact and they just moved up into Jim and Jim unfortunately got the bad end of that stick thankfully though for Jim not too heavy damage uh, I don't even think he got any damage at all it's the 41 attempt not on the 56 uh, uh, Brad Dyer yeah. yeah the 41 looked like he uh, just like hit him with his rear end and just knocked him out so we do have, of course, good news and bad news. The good news is that Jim doesn't have heavy damage. If he does have damage, it's incredibly small. The bad news is that now Jim is all the way at the back and uh, finding himself possibly in a position just like the previous nights in the wrong place at the wrong time. So bad luck for Jim, yeah. but it's still early in the race. Um, mm -hmm. And there's definitely more We're only more on lap time. 14 right now, mm -hmm. so there's definitely plenty of race to go. Um, at this point, you're definitely looking to just weigh out the carnage. Um, it sort of seems like 
these cars are just either the tracks not selling in yet probably a mix of the line hasn't been established yet uh, because not a lot of green flag laps and uh, drivers inexperienced to drive in um, traffic as well because I will say this as uh, only been on iRacing for a year it is very intimidating when you're just in traffic and just like you know you, you feel like you yourself tensing up and you're stiff and you're not racing you're just like you're trying not to wreck and my experience is when you're thinking about not doing something you're going to end up doing it when you oh, just need yeah. to worry about racing he's like let me race well stop thinking about not wrecking that's it, what needs to happen here it, it's like so it looks like bike. we're about to take a green flag mm-hmm. green flag is out i'll get i'll get back to my point it's, it's not it's not like learning a bike but i'll get back to my point about that i just couldn't finish it green oh, flag's man, it looks out like the 74 of bedford is just all over that wall on the start but he's able to manage to keep on and he's fighting for that third position as the top four cars are just all getting in there. It looks like that outside group is probably the group that you want to be. Uh, Jay Craybill Oh, and Cass! Bedford on Bedford. Bedford went over the berm. And he cannot get back on the track. Oh, man, that is heartbreaking right there. Yep, that's, that's what we were mentioning uh, in the last broadcast and this broadcast as well. Getting over, pushing it past that... Uh, uh, I keep forgetting what you call it, that brim or, or whatever you refer to the it. The berm? Yeah, the berm. There we go. The brim is something else. Um, that's some negative banking that you're going to be fighting with uh, when you get to the other side. This caution is out. It, it looks takes, like we got another caution. Yeah, that's Jason Stewart. It looks like he's got cut up in some more damage again. Uh, quickly getting back to my point. It takes you a long time to get back on track. As a checkup with the 51, 63 also got caught up. As well as Cass. Cass also got some race damage as well. Trying to get another look as well. It's looking from the blimp. Yeah, so it looked like I can't make out what that car number is. It looks like what is that? Daniel Deffer in the 13? Yeah. So the 13 got hit by the 51. And they checked up. And the one just ran right in the back of Mitch Brown in 51. So yep, that's that's a lot of damage it, for these drivers. Um, yeah, caught up. The six and three got Carla caught up in that Erlach. But going back to my point, yeah, the seventeen was involved. The four was involved. Uh, I mean, the seventeen and four were just like super minor casual ones. Yeah. Some, some some of them got some heavy damage. Others did not. Uh, quickly going back yeah, to my point, like as you were Brown mentioning, uh, Charles received the penalty. I'm uh, sorry. As you were mentioning, Charles was that uh, uh, going going into this race with the mentality of having a, a good finish helps out as opposed to just trying to be cautious because it's like riding a bike for the first time and you look at a bush or a tree and you don't want to hit that bush or tree, but because you keep on thinking about that bush or tree, you just pedal towards that bush or the tree yeah. you hit it. it it's almost like the same logic of golfing i just picked up golfing a couple of years ago um i don't worry about hitting over water or over sand uh just real quick because i don't think about like oh clear the sand clear the sand i just think about put the ball where i want it to be so i don't think about the negative thing that i don't want to happen and it looks like we got a spin out Caution it looks like uh, the six three was caught up in that yeah. Oh, he's upside down. Thirteen. That's a thirteen of Daniel Deffer. Uh, looks like that's gonna be pretty much it for this race for him, making some contact with I believe the seven and the sixty-three. The seventy-one, the sixty-three. Yep, and he got flipped. That's what happened. He looked like he ended up just carrying too much speed coming out of the turn. But looking at the seventy-one. Looked like he was way too high and sideways and just slowed down so much that I don't know if Daniel could have stopped that. But unfortunately, it looks like Daniel's night is over with. He, yep, taking it him and his crew are just heart. starting to pack up all their pit, um, their pit tools and everything and packing it up for the night. I want to get another driver just quickly tagging the wall and see who that is from this. Oh, nope, never mind. <laughs> uh, once again, thank you so much to the fine folks at SimTV for providing the wonderful camera package we have been using this whole 
this whole week. Uh, quick on the draw to get a camera package out for a brand new track. Less than, well, at this point now, it's over a week old. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, also, thank you to OCR TV for providing the wonderful graphics package that we've been using. Uh, we've been using it for over the last year with two different packages that uh, we've forgotten from him. But uh, Charles, what you're seeing so far? 50 laps to go into this main event feature to wrap up Dirt Week. What are you seeing? What what are you what are you liking? What are you not liking? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry about that. I was listening to the race controls. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> what What are you seeing? Like, what What do you like? What do you not like? Um, I don't know. Like, I definitely just from like someone that's uh. A quote unquote elitist um there's definitely a big skill gap on the course right now where like you have some drivers that seem like they know what they're doing or have a good idea then you have other drivers trying to survive trying to keep up with the more experienced drivers and they sort of don't know how to handle the turns or something like that um so it's definitely interesting um i unfortunately i hate to say this but it looks like as they're taking the green I think we're going to expect more cautions as they go three wide in the back end. They're sliding around, no contact, and it looks like the top five. As Zachary DeLong is taking a decent lead on Colin Penn. Brad Dyer is in third place. He needs uh, he needs Bedford to finish less than 14 place. And right now, Bedford's currently in eighth place right now for Mr. Dyer to take the home the championship of December Dirt Week. So we'll definitely keep you updated on the points battling. Looks like the top four is starting to uh, fan out where they're just going to uh, follow the leader for the most part. 52's got a good line, 56, and then 71. Um, let me go back to Craybill, see what's going on back there. Yeah, it's so it looks like everyone's starting to like mellow out. About right here for Bonner and Chad, or I'm sorry, Kaz Bedford, and Bedford just makes the pass super easy, and he's all the way up to sixth place. That is not good for Mr. Brad Dyer that's looking to take home the championship. But Kaz Bedford is showing, and it looks like he's gaining on the 87 of Jay Craybill. Just tracking him down, reeling him down. Man, this this Bedford guy, he's definitely uh, driven a decent amount of dirt, it looks like. Looks like he's got a little contact on Jay Craybill, but he did a good job of checking up and not running his entire car into him. With some contact to the outside wall, he dips down to the low line, and he still managed to get the pass. This Bedford guy is definitely uh, one of the more experienced dirt drivers in this field. Nothing to take away from anyone else that does have experience in here. It's just what I'm seeing because... I'm only focusing on him right now. Uh, looks like we got a decent battle up here for third. We got Colin Penn and Brad Dyer going for second place with the 71 of Richard Spar in the mix as well. And it looks like Colin's able to hold off uh, Brad, but Brad's saying, no, sir. Oh, we got some contact. Looks like Brad came oh. up. Oh, and the 71 puts in the back of Brad. And no caution yet. Oh, man, yeah, Kaz shoots up to fourth. This is bad news for Mr. Dyer right there. The 71 just did not, and it looks like the 56 has a decent amount of damage on his car as well. This is definitely a good spot for Kaz to be in. At this point, Kaz is just trying to run a safe lap. He's not worried about taking home first place. Um, I mean, he could get the first place prize. I mean, he's gaining on uh, Mr. Dyer, so who knows? Oh. And we got, Big oh wreck. man, we got a giant pile up coming in one of the turns. It looks like five, six cars are involved. Oh my gosh, what is happening here? I'm going to rewind it real quick and see what happened. It was a big checkup with the 81, 71, and another driver, and everybody else just piled in, including the 41, the 4. Let's go back just a little bit further once again. See what caused that pile uh, of... I think that was Tim Not. I'm not quite sure. No, that's the 41. Apologies. Doug Mullins, like possibly. 57? 51? No, the 57 and Doug Mullins. Yes. Looks like it started it. So it looks like the 51 and the 57? I'm sorry, the 57 and the 80? Who is that? 71, 17... 
uh, while, while you're looking through that, it, it was a pretty big pile up. A lot of drivers were involved. Um, so far, we do have an, we do have another driver that has taken it to the hauler, and that's Michael Whitting. While the car is still technically in pit road, the uh, the team has elected to start taking down all their tools to the hauler first before they they mantle their car. But there's currently nobody there at the moment, uh, so that car is considered parked and done for the for the day. Um, but nobody else involved in this incident we are seeing currently going down to pit road. 35 laps to go. And your current top five is, uh, let me get the mic closer to me, uh, Zachary DeLong, Colin, Colin Penn, Brad Dyer, Cass Bedford, and Clarence Bonner. That's your current top five at the moment. Of course, Brad Dyer definitely didn't want to see, uh, oh, excuse me, some of the results are changing right there at the moment. Uh, uh, Brad Dyer definitely didn't want to see Cass Bedford anywhere near close to him for sure, especially knowing that he's pretty much got second place oh, yeah. locked up. But uh, Charles, yeah. one to green. What are you seeing now that we've gone a, a pretty big distance? As green flag is now out. Yeah, like it's the same thing. Like people don't know how to drive in traffic. That accident was actually started by uh, Jay Crabill, just ran into the back of the fifty-seven of Doug Mullins and just created the pile up. Cast to third. Yeah, and Cass is all the way up to third, passing Dyer. Yeah, it looks like. Uh, Bedford's probably going to take this uh, championship home with all these drivers dropping out. Soon there will be not enough drivers in the race where Cass can then just stop racing and he's got the championship locked up for December Dirt Week. Brought to you by oh. Wicked Energy Gum. That and he did a traffic, good job yeah. there dodging the one, but it definitely slows him up going into the turns. Man, that one car is definitely holding up some things. Jonathan Stewart is keeping it on the high line. Making it interesting for all these cars right there. And it looked like Brad Dyer tried to take advantage of that little hiccup that uh, Bedford ran into, but Bedford was able to get past him and then just continue his line. Definitely. Oh, oh it looks like the 52 Colin Payne is over the berm. The and cast to second. Two. Yeah, so Kaz is up to second. Brad Dyer is up to third. Man. It's very interesting. Like Bedford's definitely one of the faster races, racers on this track, and he's just riding that wall in front straightaway. <laughs> I don't know if that's a normal thing or something like that, but he is not a f ball. Like he just keeps tapping it every time. Good for him, man. But he is chasing, chasing down the 93 of Zachary DeLong in first place. And it looks like Chaz Bedford wants to make a statement this week, winning three out of four races. And essentially, top being in the top three of all four races. Carlos, uh, what do you see uh, going on here with uh, Kaz? Like, do you think he's just sitting here making a statement? Should he just take it easy? Kaz is a man on a mission right now. He he wasn't able to. I, I do not believe he participated in uh, the first race of, of the week. Uh, I am not quite sure, um, but he he has won the two races last night, and he is in a pretty much decent position to at least attempt to win this race uh, currently in second place with Zachary DeLong. However, Zachary's pulling up. He's not making it easy. Cass has not really been catching up to the back of Cass Bedford as uh, taking a quick look at uh, comparing the laps has been going on. Well, the last lap Cass was a little bit faster. They kind of fluctuate. One lap Cass is faster. The other lap Zachary is faster. So Kaz might need to rely on some good old luck, maybe some cautions, and or uh, relying on uh, skill and uh, seeing if Zachary makes a mistake. Because we saw that with uh, Colin Penn, who is actually, I can see his team taking it to the hauler as well. He is done for the night. Not sure uh, what happened. We must have missed an accident. But uh, that's actually, since I've been talking, Kaz has been slowly reeling in Zachary. That could be because of the lap traffic that's currently uh in up ahead of uh Kaza. can't see who that is that might be the 51 they're, they're approaching mitch brown, mitch brown yes 51 it looks like and mitch brown looks like he's going to take the low line uh that could be one thing of uh, why zachary is producing a little bit more uh slower lap times as richard spar is catching up to kaz in second place so it looks like we got a good race for the top three right now going on um but i think the, just watching zachary uh, take these turns and everything. Uh, he's definitely uh, 
doing a good job keeping it up there. Man, there's got to be some kind of speed boost or something that uh, Kaz is hitting when he hits that wall because, I don't know, maybe hitting that wall helps make him turn going to one, and that's how he's able to um, just minimize. Oh, he oh, hit it too much. It looks like he got sideways, and he will be losing. No. not mo He, I mean, he not lost some time, of course. Yet. Yeah, he definitely lost some time on the first place car, but he still managed to hold on second as Richard is underneath him, and no. Kaz is closing that door saying, you are not passing me on that low side. There's no way I'm letting you have that. And it looks like Zachary's hitting some lap traffic up front with the 87 of Jay Craybill and, and Jim who's that? the 42 of Jim Foose are racing each other on the high line, forcing Zachary to take the low line to pass them. side by side. They, yeah, they were. Mm -hmm. They definitely got a good race going on there. Man, you see all the damage on Jim Foose's car. Man. And he's currently running in 10th, so that means nine cars are left on the lead lap. Oh, and without knowing it, Richard Spar is up in oh. second. He ended up. Oh, wreck up ahead. Oh, Richard Spar involved. Oh. Caution is out. And Richard Spar ended up hitting that turn car. How that car did get turned, though, in the middle of. Oh! Let's we'll see. Who is that? The 41, the no, no, 41, the 41 of the 10 driver. nine. No, that was that was Jason Stewart. Jason Stewart went wide, entering turn three, and he tried to get back on track and just came up right in front of Tim. Tim literally did not know that was gonna happen, and uh, wow, that. Well, first of all, I I'm actually surprised it wasn't as big as we thought that as it looked as it could have been because that could have been way worse. It looks like the physics yeah, I'm just watching from the forward, cockpit yeah. right now. He sees yeah. the one go over. Um, yeah, I guess he could have been. Maybe, maybe Tim could have been aware of that. I'm not sure. No, he definitely saw him go off the track. He never traditionally. Lost sight of him, tra uh, I, I'm sure. I'm sure he saw him go off the track, but I'm not sure if Tim was able to catch the fact that Jason had fully um, gotten the car, kind of turned. To angle it back on the track right away because usually usually when a driver goes wide um they'll they'll pretty much have to fight that banking and re-merge at the exit of the next corner um but because mm -hmm. that didn't happen he just pretty much jumped back right in front of him tim more than likely didn't know what was going to happen and also these it's oh, very hard to pass it's very hard to move in dirt if you hit the brakes that car is not going to stop anytime soon that car is not going to change its mm -hmm. lane anytime soon yeah i i definitely agree with that and unfortunately, it looks like uh, Michael Whiting and Mitch Brown have packed it up for the night. So they're taking their cars back to the hauler and packing it up for the night. It, it's, it's been a, a super exciting uh, December dirt week for sure, but I'm sure it's nine laps to go now. Or, well, when we restart, when we restart, it'll be nine laps to go. Ooh, yeah, I, I didn't even notice that with all this action. That was a good green flag run. Uh, first place, quick little rundown. We have Zachary DeLong. Second place, Richard Spar. Third place, Kaz Bedford. Fourth place, Brad Dyer. Fifth place, we have Richard Stallings as they're about to take the green. And it looks like Zachary gets a good jump. But Richard is able to hold off Kaz right for right now as they're going in turn one and two. Zachary's got a decent lead on the field. Let me go back here and look at Kaz Bedford. Oh, we got some a little bit of checkup. The 57 gets into the 99 of Clarence Bonner. And remember, there is a, a pretty tight battle going on for fourth and fifth spot. Because those two spots do not only get prized, but they do have a chance of passing second place Craig Stikes in points for the win. So here we go. We got Kaz Bedford in third place trying to hold off Brad Dyer in fourth place. And it looks like the first place and second place car of Zachary and Richard are just pulling away from the field. And it looks like they're Josh, starting Josh. to just single line. Looks like we've got Josh a caution Burlack. with five laps to go. Let's see what happened here. The 63. Oh, just was that some net way cruising. And who do you end up hitting? Uh, let's take a look. And uh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe that was some net code or there was some contact there with... Uh, yeah, that's pretty close to contact. As Gerlach is taking it no, that's, into the turn three and four. 
his car his car started to spin because of a uh, netcode. Oops, uh, as I went back incredibly far. His car started to spin because of netcode. Let's see if we can get a look at it here. He did not actually. I think I've it lost like the he tapped it. The rear of uh, 57 of Doug Mullins. I'm trying to check it out now as well. Uh, yeah, when he tapped the rear of Doug Mullins, that car uh, uncharacteristically just turned around and then he did make some car contact with, with the other driver. That that was not netcode, but the initial the initial spin to me screams netcode because it looked to me like he cleared the back of it and then it just was, turned him around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not going to say that it wasn't netcode um, or it was netcode because he was really you saw his grill from the gearbox camera on Mullen's car so that was definitely um, he I mean it was it was a bunch of checking up too so I definitely can't put the blame on anyone but unfortunately looks like Josh Gerlach is taking it back to the pits and is packing it up for the natural green white checkered and we're down to green white checkered for tonight as well. And here we go. We got Zachary DeLong in first place. And he has got a good jump on second place, Richard Spar. Third place is Kaz Bedford. Fourth place is currently 17 and Richard Stallings. And fifth place is Brad Dyer. Looks like we got a good race for. Oh, and looks like Kaz Bedford's on the outside. Trying to take second place away from Richard Spar. He isn't going to be in there. And we got a good battle here for fourth and fifth. We got some cars spinning out behind sixth place car. Oh, we got some contact between the 17 and the 56 as they cross the start finish line. It looks like Cass Bedford is able to walk away with second place. Richard and the Spar championship. Third. Yes. The championship of December Dirt Week is going to be Cass Bedford. And that, those are the unofficial championship awarding right there. Um, obviously, the admins and administrators do have the final say in everything. But as of right now, Brad Dyer was not able to make it work. Um, but I can safely say that your top two is definitely Bedford and Dyer. Let's see how bad uh, Craig Stikes is. That's going to be the story of the day right there. Well, we're, Congratulations we're... to Chaz Bedford. Congratulations to Zachary DeLong for winning the race. Um, definitely looking forward to get some interviews here yeah, with those two gentlemen. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break as we try to uh, you know, get some water in us, try to figure out, do some quick mental mats, some quick mats, um, and then get back to you with some interviews. And uh, we'll see who we can speak to when we get back. Uh, uh, we'll see you in a little bit.
All right, welcome back to the thrilling conclusion of December Dirt Week, and uh, that was a fun race, Charles. Uh, I, I'm, I'm incredibly sad that this whole thing is now over, um, but we had fun battles all throughout uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and uh, I can't wait till, till I get a chance to do something like this again. It was a blast. Uh, however, joining me uh, currently in the booth is none, un none other than the person who helped put this together. One, one of the mad lads that helped did this. It's uh, Jim Foose, and unfortunately, Jim, I know you did not have the dirt week that you were looking for, but um, just in general, how would you... Uh, First of all, as as a participator in Dirk Week, how would you describe um, your 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 role in this? Uh, on the driver side, I mean, obviously we're we're a little bit disappointed with uh, with the finishes that we got, but uh, really, um, for a new track and not having a lot of track time leading up to it, we all, we've only had it on the iRacing service a little over a week. Um, I mean, I think uh, overall what what we expected. Um, I think we expected a little bit more than we got, but uh, you got to remember, I haven't been in a dirt car since like May uh, uh, when we ran the dirt series. So um, it's been a little while and uh, these things are, are definitely a lot different than uh, than my Menards Toyota Tundra over, <laughs> uh, well, used to be on Tuesday nights, now moving over to Wednesday nights yes. for 2020. Yeah. So uh, a little different than that, but uh, still, still a blast to drive and really happy with uh, the racing. I mean, it was it was great racing all week. That's that's true. And uh, okay, well, moving on, you, we spoke on the driver's side. Unfortunately, you got caught up in a lot of issues that 100% weren't weren't of your own doing, and uh, it just wrong place at the wrong time, pretty much uh, this whole week for you. But uh, as as an event coordinator and and, and a host, uh, how would you describe the Wicked Energy Gum uh, December Dirt Week? Oh, it was a blast uh, from from the. the race administrator side with uh, with Sam taking care of that and, and doing everything there. But uh, as an event promoter, uh, I mean, we, we always could have more cars, um, but I mean, I'm not going to complain. I think these guys put on a great show for uh, for what we had this week. And uh, with it being a brand new track, everybody kind of learning it at the same time was was really a cool thing. Uh, big thank you to Wicked Energy Gum. Big I mean, you, it, big it is awesome what they have and, and their product. Um, zero calories. I didn't even know really that. Zero, so, calories. zero calories. I, you know what? I never looked at the, at the <laughs> supplement facts until I flipped the, the package of gum over this morning. Zero calories. Um, it, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. So, you know, if you're looking to, uh, to get that wicked energy gum.com is your place to go. Um, 10, uh, 10, 10 packs, basically. And you, you buy uh, two boxes, you get free flavor. shipping. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Matthew and his group, he had his, uh, the Wicked Cushion did, uh, they have a lot of really neat dirt stuff uh, and sponsor a lot of dirt uh, dirt stuff through Wicked Cushion and Wicked Energy Gum. Uh, and Matthew has done a lot for esports, dirt racing, uh, particularly iRacing stuff. Uh, but he's also involved with Casey Kane Racing and um, a couple of the uh, the teams there and the, the World Valas. And then just about everywhere you go, uh, if you go to a dirt race in the Midwest, um, I haven't been to one outside of my, my Midwest area, but uh, pretty much you go to any dirt track around here, there's somebody selling Wicked Energy Gum at the track. So uh, if you don't uh, don't want to order it online at wickedenergygum.com, just stop by one of your local tracks next season and uh, pick up a pack. It's, it's pretty good. And uh, like I said, it uh, it definitely kept uh, our, our promoter uh, awake during uh, Dirt Week here. The action as well did, but uh, yeah, that's a lot of work leading up to it. So uh, yeah. we've we've yeah. definitely relied on our Wicked Energy Gum to keep us uh, keep our eyes open during everything. I, I personally needed some during work uh, today. <laughs> it was uh, yeah tiring, but no. Uh, thank you once again. Thank you so much for Wicked Energy Gum. Fantastic to come on board and help uh, this whole event take off. It's been a blast, e even just broadcasting it. Uh, but Jim, this. This kind of wraps up the the year for you guys. 2019 is done uh, before we go to 2020 and you talk about the exciting things that it's going to happen over there. Why don't you go ahead and just describe how the year was overall for you guys? I mean, the year was, was amazing uh, from our short track series and dirt track series all the way up to uh, Mitch Brown winning all three of the Premier Series, including the overall Premier Series championship. Uh, and then winning the Sim Marketing Solutions Cup Series and Sam Maxwell Customs uh, 
truck series uh, championships. That was that was really cool. It all came down to Homestead, as as you guys know. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, to next year again back with Three Wide TV. This will be the first time that we've uh, been back with the same broadcaster for oh, two same consecutive for years for for quite a while. So we're excited uh, to be back with you guys. Yeah. And um, you know, we want to welcome Hacksaw's PCs on board. Nick's a great guy and uh, has some great products over there as well. Um, Last minute Christmas shopping, guys. Uh, I, I do wear a, a size Hacksaw's PCs, uh, so just you know, it might be a good idea. To, uh, I, know, I, I wear stocking. I wear a size uh, GTX uh, twenty eighty. Well, we'll see if we get the drivers to start a GoFundMe for you guys. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Carlos. I think you're going to be wearing a size Wicked Energy gum after this week. <laughs> Well, I'd be down for that. Uh, it, it's also, I mean, we're not going to go into too much detail over this, but it'll, it'll be nice to uh, to start a season with you guys and have more than three days to prepare. Yeah, we kind of got thrown in that together, and you guys yeah. really stepped up and uh, helped us out. So we're really proud of what you guys have done. Three Wide TV has grown this year with us. Uh, the American Sim Racing Series and American Esports Association have grown. And, um, you know, Sam Maxwell and I have, uh, we started out as he was a sponsor. He's now part owner of this deal with me, and uh, we got a great relationship, great friendship, uh, and, and we're able to kind of lean on each other when we need each other. And I've definitely definitely leaned on Sam a lot the last uh, few weeks, so uh, it's been a, kind of a difficult time for us, but uh, everything's good, um, and, and just uh, happy to have somebody like Sam there uh, that has my back. No, that's that's just fantastic to hear. Um, you quickly touched on uh, Hacksaw PCs joining for next year. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give you give us your thoughts about next year? It's going to be even more crazy and hopefully even more successful than this year. Well, I'm going to say that you guys are going to get a cool little uh, tip right here on Three Wide TV tonight. Oh, uh, and uh, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. So the the tip is there's a lot of exciting things going on in. Uh, with our, our premier cup series that's taking over the Tuesday night slot and then moving the development series over uh, the truck series into the development series. And then the Xfinity series or grand national series uh, staying over there and kind of splitting those Wednesday nights up. And that's really exciting. We got a lot of people that uh, are in line uh, going for the premier series licenses and it's really cool. Everything that's coming together for that. But uh, what I'm going to give you guys is a tidbit here is we don't have a home for the all-star race, the Hexos oh. PC All-Star race in 2020 just yet. But if I were to guess, I would say that it might be a track that the straightaways have different elevation changes. <gasps> and I think I know what it is. Of course. Well, all left turns. Well, yeah, no, I think I know oh, what it is. Turns. I think I know what it is, but I'm going to keep Was my it mouth Pocono? quiet. No. Uh, well, I mean, oh come on, Carlos! You can say it. I think it's going to be. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's let's see if Charles can figure out. No, nah, I mean, I, I'm thinking about it like mountains, maybe or something like that. So Pocono was one that came to mind. Um, what, what's a very popular track that everybody's talking about nowadays, Charles? Especially with I racing. I honestly couldn't tell you, man. To be honest, like. Well, oh, I'll Charles. tell you what. Why don't yeah, you uh, go 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 take a nice sip of some Junior Johnson uh, Midnight Moon Moonshine, and it might give you the. But I'll let you guys uh, get on. I know you guys. Is it is it a uh, track that has an today. N and a W on it? It would. Uh, yeah, that, that's New that's Hampshire. Great. No, no, North Wilkesboro. Oh yeah. So Please if it's don't. ready. If it's ready, if it's that's ready, where we course. believe the All Star Race will be going in 2020. But we gotta wait and see. We're we're in the same boat as everybody else out mm -hmm. there. So. We just wait. Like I said, we'll uh, we're gonna let you guys get on with interviews. I know you got a whole line of people that uh, finished a whole lot better and had a better week than I did that are waiting. So we'll, well let you're, them you're get on with that. One, and, uh... <laughs> I appreciate you, Jim. Thank you for uh, having this, having us. We definitely appreciate ASRS and Wicked Energy Gum for. Uh, giving us this opportunity thank you guys again it was a fun week it was all right thank yeah, you so likewise. much jim uh kaz i believe you have, you have caught up with uh, a driver to interview who would that be yeah so uh right now we have zachary the 
the race winner of tonight's race. Hey, Zachary, do you hear me? This is Charles up in the booth. Hey, Charles, I got you loud and clear. Nice, man. Well, that was a good run, man. Uh, you're definitely, uh, once you got in the got that traffic you were able to bedford and spar to like um uh, like sorry, sorry about that hold, hold on charles you're, you're cutting out every once in a while just try to be careful with your with your push talk or whatever okay it, it might be my internet connection i apologize for that so um you're doing a good job just being consistent and just keeping that high line going to where you're um pulling away and it seemed like laugh traffic was always like your downfall where they look like they're about to pass you or anything like that. Uh, how did you feel about this race? Uh, all the cautions and everything like that. Well, it was kind of like, it was kind of like a good thing. And then a negative thing. It was a little bit like, I knew that once I got going on the top and got into momentum, it was, I'd be able to carry it a little bit more than the other guys, you know, maybe make a little bit less mistakes being out front. But, uh, the caution laps also, you know, they kind of ticked away laps towards towards the end, you know, so it kind of counts towards it. So it's kind of a, a win-loss kind of thing. Yep. And um, that's one thing. Uh, once, uh, like, mid-race, like, probably, like, around, like, lap 40 to 50, um, you're just being consistently in that high line. Looked like Cass was hitting the wall, just riding it very often. I like it seemed like he was getting like some kind of speed boost about that. Would you were you noticing that in your rearview mirror, or were you just concentrating on making your turns and hitting your points? Um, I wasn't really paying attention so much to uh, Cass or anyone. Um, mm -hmm. I did every now and again down the straightaway. I would peek down, and there's a there's a little gauge to kind of tell you how far you are ahead. And I was seeing that Cass was kind of ticking that down a little bit here and there, and then. Once I got around, uh, there was a couple lap cars. And I ended up getting around them. I figured I'd be able to start gapping them again, but um, then the caution came out, so they kind of shut it down. Yeah, you, you're definitely putting on the clinic on uh, being a more consistent. I, I will say you were definitely the most consistent driver out here, and that's probably why you finished uh, first place. Um, you were able to just beat out Kaz, and you used the lap traffic to your advantages. Um, so I noticed that you didn't drive the sprint car races at all. Was was there a reason behind that? You just don't even mess with those cars or? No, I actually had planned on running them and uh, I put a lot of practice into the non-wing actually coming in a few days before it. Uh, I, I had something come up yesterday and I wasn't able to get on, but I I was I did put in a lot of practice for it. I was going to try to get that non-wing win. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I mean, you hate to hear that happen, but I mean, like this being the off season, like mini series for the league and everything like that. Um, you know, it, it is what it is when it comes down to that. But I mean, hey, you get you took down first place. You got uh, some kind of prize money coming your way. So, congratulations! Real quick before we send you off, is there anyone you want to shout out? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Jim and Sam for uh, putting this dirt week on. Uh, give a shout out to Three Wide TV for broadcasting. It always makes it fun to kind of go back and watch. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to the guys over at Bite Motorsports. Uh, we've been putting in a lot of work on the setups, and I know this is a fixed setup race, but just putting in all those laps really helps kind of get better and keep that consistency. Um, I'm going to give a, I got a shout out to uh, Bush Optics, Cords Archery, Swartz Racing, Supermoon Graphics, Wicked Energy Gum. They, uh, I believe they were the sponsor for this series mm -hmm. here. So um, my wife, Izzy, for letting me race. Awesome. Yeah, if it wasn't for your, our wives, you know, allowing us to do this, <laughs> that's always a thing. So I appreciate you, Zach. Um, thank you for giving us a shout out and congratulations on your win tonight. Thanks, Charles. Thanks for uh, thanks for the broadcast. Oh, yeah, no problem. All right. So that was Zachary DeLong, the winner of tonight's race. So now next up, we have Brad Dyer coming up here in the broadcast booth. Brad, do you got a copy of me? This is Charles up in the booth. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Brad, we have a very interesting dynamic that happened tonight. I pretty much at the beginning of the race counted you out of the point standings. Like, okay, the first and second place is so far ahead. They would have to finish almost dead last in these races. And Brad needs to scoop up all the bonus points. 
to you know have a chance at first place but then something happened and greg stikes was late to the entry and was locked out of the event almost locking you into a second place finish uh how do you feel about your run tonight i think i had a good run um I think the track prep was great. I think Jim did a good job all week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and you were flirting around like once you got through eighth, um, and you laid down the fastest lap in qualifying. Now, um, once you got out there, it was definitely a good battle between uh, you, Kaz, and Richard for you know essentially second, third, fourth. You guys were definitely uh, trading some paint, you know, doing your thing up there. Unfortunately, Zach. Zachary looked like he uh, just had a big enough lead on all you guys where once you guys started leveling out your times, he was able to just keep that lead in front of you guys. But how do you feel about getting second place and overall points? Yeah, I think it's great. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed on the broadcast, I was passing for second maybe or something like that, and I got banged real hard. I finished the last 40 laps with a bit right front. Wow. You know what? Now thinking about it, I, I do remember you something like you're in second place, and then something happened. And with the one thing with these uh, dirt track races, I've noticed um, everything happens so fast, and then the cautions are even faster. So, like as we're reviewing the tapes and everything like that, we just get back onto it, and then we sort of forget like who was involved in the accident, unless they like go you know laps down or they ended up disconnecting mid race. Um, but yeah, hey man. Congratulations! You got you sh unofficially. You have second place. Um, I don't see you not being in second place. Um, I mean, you could have finished at last, and you would have passed Greg Stikes for second. So, uh, congratulations! Um, do you have anyone to shout out before we let you go? Yeah, I want to shout out to uh, my HRE Motorsports teammates. Shout out to uh, Jim Foose for. Uh, doing this and a shout out to Wicked Energy Gum. There you go. Without without those people that you just mentioned, we wouldn't even be here doing this thing, having fun. All right, Brad, we appreciate you, and that was a great race and a great series. And I'm glad to call you in second place because that that's really what excited me for tonight was the fact that you were able to get second place. Yeah, my strongest car is a late mall. I I was only ten points behind going in the night. I really wasn't. I really wasn't focused on the points too much as, as much as I was just finishing all the laps, staying out of trouble, and, and trying to stay in the top five. Yeah, you, you keep it simple. You just break it down to the bare minimum. First, you need to worry about the race, and then however the points fall, the points fall. Well, congratulations, Brad, and you have a great night, and we'll see you next season. Yes, sir. You'll see me next December Dirt Week. Have nice. a good one, y'all. All right, buddy. All right, and that was Brad Dyer, second place in points overall unofficially. He ended up finishing fourth in the race. So now we got the points champion coming in, Kaz Bedford, the unofficial champion of December Dirt Week. Chaz, do you have a copy? I do, I do. Congratulations, buddy. It looked like you ran away with the championship. Um, I was going over the points pre-race, and you were – were so far ahead that it looked like Craig Stikes was the only person you had to worry about. And then he doesn't even show up to race. Yeah, he, you... uh, he, he yeah. missed it barely. But uh, no, that was the, the one worry I had about the points. I knew if if I could defeat him, then from there on it would be a little, little easier. Yeah, he, little it looked like he room. was three points behind you going into this race. And essentially, your goal was to finish ahead of him. Um Brad Dyer had a long shot to pass you guys if you guys finished like 15th or worse. And he got all the bonus points. So um, it was definitely a good feeling that he, it wasn't really a clean race for anyone, I don't think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, tell me how the race went. Um, were you sort of like worried? Because my, my perspective was there was a good mix of experienced and inexperienced drivers where that's the reason why we had a bunch of cautions early on. Was that what you were feeling throughout the race? Yeah, and my, my main worry was getting caught up in somebody else's wreck and it breaking my car. And uh, and then I, I started making subtle mistakes. Like I, I, I ran off in turn one, had to bring the, uh, mm -hmm. the burn back around. 
And then yeah. uh, you weren't you didn't lose that position to uh I think it was um and that was towards the end of the race too, man. That was man, that so okay, real quick, you kept hitting the outside wall mm-hmm. or were you just going up that little banking on the straightaway going into turn one? I I think it killed my chances, but I hit the wall on the front stretch and broke something in the rear end. Yeah, we we had a good uh, look okay. at that. And, and uh, from then on, it it was more defensive driving, where I was yeah, just that, trying to hold what I had. About it. Mm-hmm. You ended up getting like sideways or something like that on the wall. But um, sort of before that, though, were you just always like barely nipping that wall, or were you just going up the bank where? It was like you're. It almost seemed like you use that to help you turn. If if you can set your straightaway up correctly, there is a little berm down at the end of the wall. Mm-hmm. If, if you can roll your car off of that, it will set you up for turn one. Okay, I was a little worried about that because it looked like your car was just getting unsettled, but then all of a sudden your one and two was just like way better than everyone else's because. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things where uh, those cars were kind of skeptical, and if you didn't have them planted on entry, there was really no telling where they were going. Yeah, and that's what it sort of seemed like uh, or felt like watching it. Uh, just the cars were going everywhere, and well, once uh, some of the cars got uh, out of the field and everyone got spread out, we had a decent run where it was good and everything like that. Nice. Um, so you take home the championship. Three wins, and I think you got top three in all four races. Am I mistaken? I got. Um, a t- you got like third or second? Sec- second place in my first one, first in the next two, and second in my last one. Nice. Yeah, so you, you definitely made a statement, and unfortunately, the only other person that could have said something about that was not here, and his own said um, to watch out for Greg Sykes tonight. And <laughs> you know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone uh, from uh, Bedford's team sort of called in to hit the DDoS Mr. Uh, Stites <laughs> so he couldn't connect. <laughs> and the, um, I wasn't sure if I was going to run this year, but I, I feel like since I was defending champ that I, I might as well give it a shot. And it, it worked out for the best. Nice. Nice. And that's what it's all about, just having fun and enjoying yourself at the end of the day uh real quick before we let you go do you have anyone you want to shout out uh, i want to give a shout out to uh pro stars racing um smith brothers body shop we got uh who else we got on the car race on texas um i'm trying to think and it's slipping my mind i'm sure there'll be sponsors some, someone else happy. That <laughs> Well, all right. I'll I'll settle it all up with a victory lane picture. There you go. Yeah, and coverage too. It's like, (laughs) yep, that's your decal right there, taking home the championship. All right, Kaz. Well, great run, um, great finish, uh, great little uh, December dirt week, and we look forward to hopefully you come back next year and uh, look forward to broadcasting all your uh, future races with uh, ASRS. Uh, I will. I will definitely make an effort. To see you guys more. Nice. I appreciate that, Kaz. And you have a good night, man. You too. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. So there you have it. Our points winner for December Dirt Race brought to you by Wicked Energy Gum. Remember to check them out, wickedenergygum.com. They have a store locator. And if you don't have a store near you, you can always order packs to your home, which is really convenient. Carlos. How do you feel about uh, December Dirt Race Week? Uh, I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm happy and sad at the same time. Um, sad that it's over. Uh, as well, now that I say specifically, right when I said over, the server decided to close down, which is our cue to go home. All right, uh, everybody's telling us to leave now. So there's only one last thing we had to take care of, Charles, and that is the final race result for tonight. Unfortunately, we are to receive word from Jim Foose. That um, due to Dan Lisa still having issues with the website, um, they have to manually input every point uh, for tonight. So uh, we're not going to be getting any any official 
confirmation of, of points until much later on in the night. Jim's working hard on that already as we speak. Um, once we see something, we'll, we'll, we'll retweet it. We'll share it on Facebook and Twitter, wherever we see it. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, that should be out soon. Uh, but for the final results... Uh, in first place, Zachary DeLong. Uh, second, Kaz Bedford, of course, which more than likely, uh, unless something is weird, he's the champion. Uh, Richard Spar in third, Brad Dyer fourth. Richard Stalling will be finishing fifth with Clarence Bonner in sixth. Jim Foos finishes seventh with Doug Mullins in eighth. J.R. Bash will finish ninth and Jay Crabbo in tenth. And Charles, why don't you go ahead and take away with the rest? In 11th place, we have Tim Knott. Uh, 12th place, we have Jason Stewart. Thir- 13th place, we have Josh Gerlach. 14th place, we have Mitch Brown. 15th, Colin Penn. 16th, Michael Whiting. 17th, Daniel Differ. In 18th place, we have AJ Cruz. Shout out to Sam Maxwell. Uh, even though he's being scored in 19th place, he was our race admin. And that's why he is up there. Yes, and we also got word from Will Wurstler Racing just now saying that the uh, local police had completed a security check at the Stikes residence and confirmed that Craig's dog is fine. Okay, so he didn't kick his dog? No, oh, he did goodness. not kick his dog. I, I was on, I was about to... I had PETA on speed dial ready to go at no, Why PETA? <laughs> All right, let's, let's just get away from everything here. Uh... Before we do go, of course, we have some amazing things you want to give out. Craig, uh, Craig, Charles here will we'll come. I called you Michael yesterday. I called you Craig right now. Charles here will we'll take care of all the series sponsors. And now I'll go ahead and wrap it up with the Three White TV sponsors. All right. So thank you again to uh, America's Sim Racing Series for hosting this event. Thank you to Wicked Energy Gum for hosting December Dirt Week. We do appreciate you guys and everything like that. I, thank you very much, Carlos, for allowing me to uh, have my provisional broadcasting uh, all this week. I had uh, a lot your, of fun. Your, your probation is actually over, and uh, we got to quickly do the evaluation. Um, we think you're fine. You're hired. Time to get paid. So As an thank you very much, Carlos. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much it, man. I appreciate this opportunity. I'm looking forward to the future, man. Yes, thank you so much for being here and helping us out with December Dirt. We also helped us out with our Sunday broadcast, which will, we will also be uh, live this Sunday as well. Uh, on that note, we also want to thank the fine folks at SimTV for providing the graphics package we were uh, we were looking at all this week, as well as OCR Television for providing the graphics package we've been using for over a year now. Um, that's going to be it from us tonight. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching, everybody that commented, everybody that even took a moment to share. Thank you so much, and we will see you guys all next year for ASRS. See ya!